Well, hello again. Thank you for joining me online. Uh, this is a message for New Life Ministries uh, for May 29th. Now, if you're a member of my church, you should be watching this online. I've been telling you I won't be preaching in this service. We have the table set up. We're going to have a potluck lunch, uh, but we are going to worship together. We're going to be one week out from the day of Pentecost. We've been talking for 50 days, praying, prophesying, staying focused on what God wants us focused on so that when we get to the day of Pentecost, we can have an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, an anointing, a release of God's power like they had in the book of Acts. Uh, Acts chapter 2, the birth of the New Testament church. What did it look like? God's Holy Spirit and power came all over the believers, the disciples who were in that upper room. They went out in the street. God's power was everywhere. 3,000 people came in, got blown away by that power, gave their lives to Jesus, and the New Testament church was birthed. We're setting our sights. We need the same anointing. We need the same release of God's power so we can accomplish the same things by the Spirit and by God's grace that they accomplished then. Anyway, we're a couple of weeks out. Here's a message. I'm going to sow some seeds in your heart. Pray over this stuff. Meditate on it. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. We want to see that in the weeks to come. Anyway, let's get right into this. Uh, we are in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 8. Uh, uh, well, let me, let me give you my note first. All believers have gifts from the Holy Spirit. God gives them so that we can love and minister in his strength and his ability. I've asked you to join us in prayer this week as we pr pursue the Holy Spirit and these gifts. All right, from the scripture, to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom to another uh, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophesy, prophecy, to another uh, the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. I want to go down the list. We're going to take a closer look at each of these gifts and again, I'm sowing seed. I'm giving you some understanding of it so you'll be expecting it. So you can have some faith about these things in our church services, especially as we move through the day of Pentecost. All right. Uh, first three gifts we're going to talk about. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. I said in your note, God gives you wisdom and knowledge through the Spirit. When these gifts operate, you know exactly what to do to minister with God's grace. God's grace is the power he gives you to anoint you and enable you to do his will. There will be no doubt, and faith becomes a simple, enjoyable experience. How'd you like to go into a situation knowing that you've been instructed, knowing that you've heard from God, knowing what's going on, knowing what to do, how to do it, what to expect, and it's clear and it plays itself out the way God said it would because he knows and he revealed his knowledge and his wisdom to you. Somebody said we, uh, knowledge is, is, a, is a, a, a body of information or facts, wisdom is knowing exactly what to do with that information. Discerning of spirits is simply the ability, by the grace of God, it's the ability to know what's going on in a, in a room or in a gathering from a spiritual perspective. Is it a good spirit? Is there some negative spiritual stuff going on that you have to deal with? Is there a spirit that's going to get the whole room healed? Is there, is there an anointing for people to get saved? You discern by the spirit and these gifts what what is going on, you know exactly what, what the situation is, what to do with it. The vocal gifts, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. From your note, Christ gave us authority to minister in his name. 
Holy Spirit will give you specific words to speak that give revelation and release his grace. I'm going to say it every time. Grace is God freely giving you power to accomplish his will. This speaking by the Spirit is the practical application of operating in Christ's name and authority. God created us. He said, be be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. He gave us authority in this earth. Throughout the scripture, we operate in God's authority by speaking in his name, speaking according to his word. And when we do that, we use the authority he gave us to release his power to accomplish his will. The vocal gifts are you using God's authority, speaking with some faith to know your words will release the power of God to accomplish the will of God. These have to be and will have to be spoken out of your mouth. And when the when the when these words are spoken, they bring the entire body of believers. The whole room will come into agreement about what they are hearing God say. When we have that kind of agreement, the power of God is loosed like maybe you've never seen before, but we long to see again. All right, power gifts, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles. When these gifts are working, doubt will not be possible. There's a situation we want to have. Doubt will not be possible. The power of God will be so strong that you simply obey the Holy Spirit and watch God work by his divine grace and power. Boy, what we do Well, and there's a lot of things you can do and you should do to strengthen your faith and to pursue uh, the kind of faith you can move a mountain with. We, we, We talked about this the other day. There are things you can do to grow your faith. But when the gift of faith is operating, you don't do a thing. You know that you know that you have the faith for the miracle or the healing or whatever it is. These gifts are God because he loves you. God because he needs you for to accomplish his will, anointing you with his spirit for these purposes. Now, let's read this. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. I like to keep pointing out what the Holy Spirit is saying. Every one of us, each of us has a part. God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, uh, gifts of helping. You know, there's a gift called helps. And it's anything you can imagine that helps whatever God is trying to do. You can help the guy praying for miracles. You can sweep the floor. You can help pass out food. You can hand, give clothing to people uh, who, who are in need. You can, you can pray. You can prophesy. Everybody has some gift. God wants us to learn to use our part, to be submissive. God always has an authority structure set up in the church. We need to flow under that. That's why he says first apostles, then prophets. There's an order there. We all have a part. God has designed the church so that the authority structure will manage things so every ministry can be performed, Everybody can do their part and the ministry of Jesus Christ goes forward because the spirit is managing and organizing the gifts so they remain effective and they, 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 they all get their chance to do and fulfill God's purposes. Anyway, helping, uh, uh, guidance, different kinds of tongues. God has a plan to help us manage the gifts he gives us. God is teaching individuals and churches to operate in these gifts in greater and more effective ways, more than we've ever seen. Get involved with what God is doing. He wants to use you to bring Christ's love and ministry to the world. For 50 days, we've been praying and prophesying, focusing our attention on the day of Pentecost. The New Testament church was birthed 
with an outpouring of God's spirit. The gifts were all over the believers, all over the city, and the gospel spread like wildfire throughout the region and throughout the world. We're looking for that. We have to have that. We're praying for revival. This is what it's going to look like. Finally, I said this at the top and then we'll read the scriptures. The way of love, God's foundation for operating in his gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 29. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts, yet I show you a more excellent way. Chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so I could remove mountains, but have not love. He says, without love, it's nothing. You know what we're believing for? I taught you last week. We're longing for the day when everybody comes into this church and they're full of the spirit. They've been hearing from God all week. That's why this message is going online on Tuesday so you can hear it, pray it, Prophesy it over yourself. Ask God to manifest, manifest his gifts in you and through you and come into church anointed with God, ready to let the spirit use you. Let him, to, let him use you to, uh, to pour out his spirit and his gifts on the body of Christ. That's what we're looking for. I sow this in the good ground of your heart, expecting a good harvest to come in. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who join me online. Father, I release your spirit to water this seed and cause it to bear 30, 60, and 100 fold return for the glory of God, that people will be so filled with your spirit that when we gather together, Lord, on a Sunday or a church meeting, a prayer meeting, or out in the street where the people are hurting, we want to be so filled with your spirit that the gifts flow out of us like a river of living water and bring life and love and the ministry of Jesus Christ to this hurting world. I declare in Jesus' name, we will have that. And Lord, we're looking to the day of Pentecost, great place to pour out your spirit just like you did when you birthed your New Testament church. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I bless you. Thank you so much for joining me online and uh, we'll see you soon.